Hey, what's up? I'm Jerry from Simply Cyber, and I'm partnered with Lima Charlie on this video concept. You're absolutely gonna love it. If you are an aspiring SOC analyst or just looking to build an actual practical free home lab that can help you learn advanced SOC analyst skills, you're going to want to watch this video. I guarantee you there's going to be so much value. It's out of control. So on February 21st, Eric Capuano, the CTO from Recon InfoSec, published a series of blog posts called So You Want to Be a SOC Analyst. Now, Eric Capuano is a longtime 20 plus year former Air Force cybersecurity blue team defender expert. Not only is he incredibly good at cybersecurity operations, but he's also an amazing instructor. He gets asked all the time because of his expertise, hey, I want to be a SOC analyst. What should I do? Well, Eric has taken all of his years of knowledge and he's compressed them into this very easy, very direct series of blog posts that will set you up for success on building a lab of your own, not just a lab, but actually showing you how to throw attacks from an adversarial built workstation and see the attacks coming in on the victim machine and do something about it. So let's dive in a little bit more. The blog post is a three part blog post right now with the first part being setting up the actual environment. Now it's two small VMs, which is absolutely perfect. In Ubuntu Linux attacker machine, you don't need Kali. I know Kali purple and Kali, Kali, Kali parrot everything, all that, you don't need it for this lab. The point is not to learn offensive security. The point is to build a capability that allows you to throw controlled attacks at your victim machine because you're studying to be a SOC analyst, right? Not an attacker. The other machine is a Windows VM machine to simulate a typical victim machine. Most of the Windows workstations are all throughout corporate America and globally, right? Windows has a huge footprint so it's very important to use those machines as the victims because that's what you're most likely to encounter. In the second part, you're actually gonna throw on your adversarial hat and as Eric puts it, make some noise. You're actually going to attack using a C2 um, post-exploitation framework called Sliver. Very dynamite stuff. And then the third part, we're gonna get into Lima Charlie, which is technically an endpoint detection and response solution, but it's so much more. It is security as a service. And we're gonna get into deeper detail on what that looks like after we go through the beginning. So setting it up, just to give you screenshots of what you should be seeing and expecting, this is the current look of the VMware Workstation Pro. Now I said everything is free in this. You can download a trial version of this solution, which will allow you to put in your Windows and your Ubuntu virtual machines and run them on your machine safely. So once you get VMware stood up, you'll go ahead following the blog post and you'll download Ubuntu, a Linux distribution. Again, you don't need any fancy attacker versions of Linux, just a regular Linux is gonna work fine. Finally, you'll go to Microsoft and get the Windows 11 Development Environment OS. Again, f absolutely free. It will be a trial version. It's got limited functionality, but for the SOC Analyst Lab, you're gonna be doing all right. Eric's blog post, after you get the two VMs set up, walks you through actually disabling all of the security settings on the Windows machine. We want this lab to be built in such a controlled way that when we are learning things in the lab and we are doing very controlled experiments with throwing this particular type of attack, we want to know for a fact that it's coming through cleanly to the victim machine so we can use Lima Charlie to actually observe it and develop detection rules around it. You can see here just a couple screenshots. You're getting into the command line, PowerShell, whatever you want to call it, and you're configuring registry settings. You're configuring uh, timeouts and monitoring to make sure that the system doesn't shut off while you're messing with it. You'll even go into the registry editor and modify values. It's all spelled out step by step by Eric. You don't need to do any guesswork. He does it all for you. You just need to follow the process. After the Windows machine is completely disabled from a security perspective, we're going to want to put in a little extra capabilities for audit and logging, right? Some telemetry for us to do something fun with inside Lima Charlie. Sysmon is a well-known, perfectly great example of a tool that will throttle up the logging from what a security-minded professional really cares about. Once you pull Sysmon down onto the Windows box, you'll 
Oh, and of course, Sysmon is presented by Microsoft. It's part of their Sys internals package, so it's absolutely legit. It really is a power play. I'm I'm kind of wish that Microsoft just deployed it naturally with the Microsoft operating system, but I digress. Once you get Sysmon on, you'll actually pull down Swift on Security Sysmon Config. Now, Swift on Security is a must follow on Twitter, I might add, but has developed a configuration file that is fine tuning Sysmon for security reasons, right? You can use Sysmon for health. Maybe the IT people want to use it from a security perspective. This configuration is going to set you up with, you know, 80% of the way of anything that a SOC analyst is really going to care about. Now we've got our Windows VM completely disabled on security and all sorts of telemetry coming in. We're going to push that telemetry to Lima Charlie, and I'll show you that in a minute. Now we're going to hop over to the adversarial box and install that sliver framework. Remember I mentioned you don't need Kali or Parrot or any of these other wonderful offensive security Linux distributions? Nope. Sliver is an open source C2 post-exploitation framework. You may have heard of Cobalt Strike. It's very similar in capability, and it'll allow us to own the victim machine and be able to run commands and push information back to our machine. Exactly, I might add, how a adversary is going to be interacting with victim machines. You want this lab to look just like the real life setting, right? You're learning to be a SOC analyst. You're not playing here, you're learning. So making it as close to reality as possible is going to give you a huge advantage in actually you know, learning and absorbing that knowledge. So once we get the C2 framework set up and you can see here, Eric's blog post, step-by-step, step, copy and paste this, run this command, et cetera, et cetera. Once you have that all installed, we're gonna install Lima Charlie. And this is where the real power of the SOC Analyst Lab resides, right? SOC Analysts, they, they look at stuff, but they also respond to things. And that's where Lima Charlie's gonna come in. He'll walk you through installing step-by-step step the Lima Charlie agent. Lima Charlie is a cloud-based solution and the agents go on the workstation. So we're gonna put the agent on the Windows machine and it's gonna report back into the Lima Charlie console. Again, absolutely free. You can see this is what Lima Charlie looks like. I've already set up a little bit for the sake of time here. It's kind of like one of those cooking shows where I put the batter in the oven and then open the other oven and a cake comes out. So I've created an organization in here called Eric So You Want to Be a Sock Analyst. Now you can see on my sensors list, my Windows VM is currently offline, but you can see it reported in. I have one agent. This is my victim machine. Now I mentioned um, Windows Sysmon. You're going to configure artifact collection for the Sysmon logs to come in, we want that rich telemetry inside our EDR platform so we can do something with it. I just wanna point out really quickly, when you do have the agent in installed and it's online actively running and pushing telemetry, there's a lot of wonderful things you can see. You can see a timeline. This is actually reporting in exactly what is going on in that workstation. I wanna point out, this is not all malicious activity. This is just basically like the vitals of that Windows workstation. Think about it when you go to the doctor and you got all the monitors hooked up and they're looking at all the graphs and stuff like that. It's just data. It's just telemetry on looking at the system. Yes, there is some bad stuff kind of spliced in here, but that's that's part of the job of a SOC analyst is to know what to look for, all right? You can also see that Lima Charlie allows us to look at active processes, active network connections, and the actual file system on the machine itself. So if there's some malicious file dropped in a temp folder, there's a weird PowerShell running from somewhere, we're gonna be able to look at it from this centralized managed console. It's very powerful, it's very cool. I might also mention with networking and processing, abnormal system requests, abnormal network connections, these type of things are naturally color coded differently to kind of pull your eye as a SOC analyst. It's a nice quality of life feature that Lima Charlie's integrated in. I can't demonstrate it right now because the system is offline, but believe me, when you go through the lab, look for it, you'll absolutely see it. So once we are looking at our, um, our system, we throw a couple alerts and we start looking at it. Now, I've already stepped ahead and created a couple detections. In the lab, Eric has you use Sliver to throw a proc dump for LSAS. Now, I've already done that. And you can see when we see it in the system, I've already developed a detection. You can see 
Lima Charlie pulls up all of that rich information. And normally, if I didn't have the screen all squeezed up, it would look a little bit cleaner to a SOC analyst. But look at all this rich intel. It tells you what process is running, what IP address, where is it coming from, right? This is all very, very powerful stuff. Now, I want to point out that you'll be able to see right here, you can view the event in a timeline. Um, which I'll show you in just a moment. When I scroll down, you can see sensitive process. That's a problem. So this looks like bad. So we can go ahead and view the event in the timeline and actually pull it up right now and boom, it drops us right to the moment that that bad event actually happened. And we can take a look at it right here, sensitive process. Uh-oh, that's not good. We drill into it. We can actually then start looking around what ha what was happening around that time, what network connections were being made. We could see something came in across a very unusual port from an unexpected IP address, and we can begin our SOC analyst work. We have effectively stood up um, a, a system to detect attacks and then configure actions based on those attacks. And like I said before, this is just the beginning of a base platform. This is, you are all set up now to start throwing mimi cats or other well-known attack patterns, maybe uh, uh, something in the wild that was just reported in the news yesterday. You can do those things and see what it looks like in Lima Charlie and then configure detections. It's a very powerful lab. It's a very powerful tool and it can absolutely give you the experience and at minimum, an incredible talking point in any interview for an entry-level SOC analyst role, I guarantee you, even active SOC analysts who want to experiment and work on different detection engineering techniques or for purple teaming exercises can use this lab and use the power of Lima Charlie in order to achieve those results. So go after that blog post in the description below, walk through it, build your lab, and start developing those skills. It's a very powerful lab. Special thanks to Eric Capuano and the whole Recon InfoSec team for delivering this greatness to the community. I'm Jerry from Simply Cyber. On behalf of Lima Charlie, thank you for your time, and we'll see you next time.